This is question two from paper 3-1 from the June 2020 exams from Cambridge International Education. Up the top right of the screen, you'll find a card that'll bring you to my playlist that has the solutions to the other questions in this paper. And in the description below, you'll find a link to an image of this question, so you can try the question before looking at my solution. This question asks us to expand this expression here, two minus three x, all to the power of minus two, in ascending powers of x. To do this, we're gonna to need to use the McLaren series, which is a special case of the Taylor series. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on what that is. It deserves its own class, which uh, I don't have on the channel at the moment as of making this video, but hopefully uh, soon I will. Um, it's um, just quickly, basically we're gonna write this out in terms of, of just one simple number, so A, plus another number with an X, plus another number with an x squared. And that's what this question wants us to do, just that much there. But if we could stay going, we could do an x uh, cubed, uh, another number with an x cubed, and we could stay going with as much as we want. And this would give an okay approximation of this question in a certain world, in a small area. For, for most uh, purposes, the first few terms here will do if it's close enough to zero. Uh, in the McLaren series. Another way to do that, uh, just to show that, we might have a function, let's say it looks something like a this here, a function, and if we were just to guess it looked like a simple number, the McLaren series is gonna give us this number here, and it's gonna say, this function looks roughly like this one. Now, they're not correct, it doesn't, but it does right at that point. And then if we, if we look at two of them here, we'll end up getting a line and it'll be actually this line here, the tangent to this curve. And they'll say, this looks roughly like this one, close enough. No, again, not quite, uh, but we can stay going as much as we want. The third one will look something like this. Okay, it's getting closer in that world. It looks something like it. The next one will look something like this. Again, it's looking closer. And if we stay going more and more, we we'll get closer and closer to what the actual function looks like. Um, actually, in this case, it will only get close in a small part of the world. All right, hopefully that's enough of a um, recap on what the McLaren series is. Let's go ahead and try and use it. We're given a formula for the McLaren series. You'll be given this in your exam. It tells us if we have a function, and this is the function we have, well, we'll make a function out of this expression. It can be wrote like this or approximated. So we'll write, instead of equals, we'll put a little squiggle there above it. So it's approximately like, it's approximately like F0, if that's where we got that straight line from, plus the derivative at zero multiplied by X. That was that uh, straight line, this is a slope times X, a straight line. Um, plus the second derivative at zero X squared. And this says going on as many as you want. This question only asked, for the first three. So that's all we have to do. We just have to fill in all these, these three numbers here. So we just have to get F0, that's quite easy. We have to get the derivative and put zero in. Should be quite easy. The second derivative and put zero in. Let's, let's do all that now. We have Fx. Let's get to the derivative of Fx. That is, we differentiate this function. It's the chain rule, minus two, two times three x, to the power of minus three, and then let's differentiate what's inside, and we'll get minus three. And let's clean this up a bit. Minus three and minus two, we get six. Two minus three x to the power of minus three. And let's differentiate again, we're gonna need both of them. So the second derivative is equal, so we're differentiating this one now. Minus three will come down, we'll get minus three, We'll have a six already there. Let's do it in different order. We know we're gonna get this minus three again. Let's write that out front. And we'll have this term left alone. And the minus three will become a minus four. Well, let's clean all that up. We'll get nine times six is 54 plus, minus on a minus is a plus, two minus three x to the power of minus four. All right, we didn't actually want these. What we want is, uh, let's put the down, squeeze it in down there. We want um, the first derivative at zero. Let's see, we put zero in. 
we get two to the power of minus three. That's just uh, equals to six. Two to the power of minus three is one over two to the power of three. Or, well, let me write it like this. Uh, instead of two to the power of minus three, it's two to the power of plus three on the bottom row. And uh, this is the same as six over eight. That is the same as three over four. And again, we'll squeeze this one in down here. I'll do this one a little quicker. Uh, this becomes two to the power of minus four. That's actually, two to the power of minus four is one over 16. And we can clean that up, I guess. Uh, four go, uh, two goes into bow anyway. 27 over eight. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, so this, the question then, we can write all of this out. Sorry, I never wrote in F0. F0 is two to the power of minus two, which is one over four. All right, we can look at the McLaren series now. Fx is approximately equal to, F0 is a quarter plus um, the first derivative of zero, three over four times x. And the second derivative at zero was 20, oh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting something from the McLaren series. Divided by second factorial, divided by the first factorial, which is just one, divided by zero, zero factorial, which is just one. Um, the next one would be three factorial, four factorial, so on. Apologies, that's been missing. Hopefully, hopefully some of you have been shouting at the video saying, you're forgetting the factorial. Apologies. Uh, so what do we have? We have one over four, three over four, x, and we have 27 over eight, and another two, so that's 27 over 16, x squared. And we could stay going. We, we'd have to do another uh, derivative here, but that's it, that's the answer to the question. Oh, there's a second part. That's the answer to part A, and the first, and in, a, in ascending powers of x, including the terms x squared. Yeah, so that's it. It's, they're all the coefficients. See, a quarter, three quarters, 27 over 60. Okay, for part B then they say, state the set of values of x for which the expression is valid. Now this is, it's only one mark for this question. So it's actually quite easy to answer, but it's really complicated to explain. So I'm gonna have to leave that uh, for a more general video on it. I'll, I'll just try and sum it up in a couple of minutes though. Uh, basically, this term goes on forever. If we we're being proper, this term goes on forever. And if this added up, if this expanded, if this number just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, well, it'd be pretty useless to us. So it needs to converge to an exact answer. Um, it needs to, so in that case, we need to test for convergence of this series. It's actually, It'd be difficult-ish to do, some people would be good at it, from this part. That's because uh, this two here is gonna make it messy. And in fact, the minus three is all built into each of these terms. So it's hard to see what the pattern is here. Because if we can find a pattern, we can test for convergence. Uh, so what I mean by that is the last term out really far down will be, I don't know, let's say it's um, a times x to the power of Let's put in just 10,000 here. We need this to be a really small number. We need it to be getting smaller and smaller. So we need to know what's A gonna be. We need to know is X less than one or bigger than one. So to do that, we can do it from this line, but it's gonna be easier if we start again. Instead of doing it with this part, and this is how a lot of teachers would teach it, and it's certainly for this second part, it's much easier. Instead of doing this term here, fx equals two minus three x to the power of minus two. If we break this up and we put two times one minus three over two x. So we're just uh, taking two out of that and taking two out of this. And all of this is to the power of minus two still. We break this up at two to the power of minus two is a quarter. And we'd have one minus three over two x to the minus two. If we expand this term out here, this term, if we expand that, 
it will actually come out much nicer because of this one. Um, and we'd have to multiply by a quarter. We'd get the same answer. We'd get an identical answer here. But it'd be much easier for us to see this term. Basically, we'll get an answer like, uh, I think I had it. Yeah, I think I can figure this out. Um, our answer would look like fx is approximately equal to, well, there'd be a quarter. So let's, uh, yeah, let's leave a quarter outside. So it'll be approximately equal to one plus, uh, let's see, minus, we'll go with minus two times minus three over two x. Instead of having an x, we'd have a minus three over two x. That, that's the pattern that's happening here. Uh, the next term would be plus three minus three over two x squared um, x. Oh, sorry, the x would be inside there x squared and this would stay going on this pattern is easier to see and um, as we get bigger and bigger it's just going one two three four and the last term the, when it's really big it would be just n times uh, let's change this to now let's leave the minus minus three over two to the power of n now is this number big or small that's an easier one to answer nobody cares about this n when n becomes really, really big, this is the only one that's going to matter. He's going to dominate that guy. So basically, oh, there's an x in here. So basically, what number does x have to be to make this more manageable, is what I'm uh, trying to get at. Uh, I need this to be a really small number. I need it to go towards zero. So that means whatever's inside here, minus 3 over 2x, needs to be less than 1. If it's less than one, this guy will become zero. Or I should say the absolute value of this is less than one. Um, because x could be a minus as well. That's, um, oh, I need to play around with this. Let me just squeeze it in here right at the end. This is all for one mark. So again, you don't have to do all, I'm just trying to explain it a little. If we move this around, first of all, the absolute value makes that a plus. Uh, if we multiply both sides by 2, divide by 3, we'll get the absolute value of x is less than 2 over 3. That's the answer. That's the answer to part B. And that's something you should be able to see just by looking at this line here. This number is less than or equal to 1. So the absolute value of this number is less than or equal to 1. You should be able to go from here to here to here straight away. And lots of students would have started the first part with this. But you don't have to. You can start the first part with this. I think it's more clear to understand the first part without doing that. Okay, I hope that hasn't confused people too much. I'm sure it probably has. It's a really complicated topic and I'd love to be asked more questions on it. And I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and have a great day.